Hello everyone, hello, hello, and welcome. I'm Jennifer from Personal Power Life Coaching. I'm very happy to be here with you, with all of us, and today I am creating this PPLC empowerment video to, to support you on your journey, to connect with you, and to share something, an experience, and a situation that we all may be going through and we have gone through or will go through at some point in our lives. So it involves the management of our internal states and the way that we are dialoguing with ourselves. Specifically, when you find yourself caught in a thought spiral that is leading into negative emotions, into fear, overwhelmment, and worry, and those related emotions involving a particular situation that you are working on or that you care about. And so whatever your situation is or has been, we can, we can all relate to when you're caught in that thought process. One thought comes, it triggers a worry, and then another thought tags on to it. And then another thought tags onto it. And it's almost like we were running into the future, anticipating the worst that can happen. And you can already feel your emotions becoming this sort of tornado and a rumbling set of dark, stormy clouds that feel overpowering. So how do we stop that? How do we detain those moments of negative momentum from evolving further in a resourceful way so that you can at least stop it there? And even if you don't take yourself into the opposite direction of full positivity and full feeling good about things, you can at least know that you didn't go any deeper into the hole or the ditch. How do we do this? What to do? Well, there are a variety of techniques out there in the world. And one of the things that we can tell ourselves from a life coaching perspective, from myself as a certified life coach and NLP practitioner, is to firstly be aware of what is going through your mind. Be aware that you are in this thought process and immediately as you bring awareness into your state, you stop and you breathe and you pause so that you're aware and you're bringing more presence into the moment and more self-control. And if you're a meditator, then you know about the notion of looking at your thoughts, knowing that you are not your thoughts and to let them go. This is what you may experience during your 10, 15, 20 or more minutes of meditation. And what you can do is just let the thoughts pass. Let them pass and do not attach yourself to them. Remind yourself that I am not my thoughts. They are simply thoughts and they do not define me. You can stop it right there, like as if you have a big stop, a big red stop sign. And then using a language, noticing your vocabulary as you're thinking these thoughts, such as if you're being really hard on yourself, like, oh, I'm, I'm scared or I'm afraid or I'm a failure or, you know, this is just horrible or this is a dismal situation or um, it sucks. Well... Consider your language in that moment and shift your language away from that and make it more about what you want to feel. And firstly, if you can't come up with anything positive or anything uplifting, at least you can say, well, you know, I realize I acknowledge that thought. I'm aware of that thought and I choose to let it go. It is what it is right now. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing right now. And notice, secondly now, um, notice if you're catching yourself in the future. Are you rushing into the future? Or are you stuck in the past of regret and loss and resentment? Or are you being present in the now, right? Like what's really going on right now? What is the most urgent and important thing for you to do right now regarding this situation, regarding your life? 
regarding your relationship or your work situation, um, your your friendship, your job, your um, the email that you have to send or that you will have to send, right? Bring that stillness and that presence of mind as to where you're really in, whether you're in the future, racing towards what might happen and anticipating the worst because you want to avoid fear and rejection and pain, or if you're in the past because you want to bring that pain on to yourself from the regret of the loss and also Another aspect of this thing, which we could consider as a third portion of it, is that our thoughts become habitual and they become, they have a certain momentum to them. So the more that you are caught up in the same types of thought streams on a daily basis, the more natural and normal it is for your brain to think them. Because the brain is a composition of neurons and neural pathways and networks that are pathways that are lubricated and they are steady. And the ones that you lubricate and work out the most are the ones that have the fastest connectivity, the ones that will be streaming the information the fastest and most easily and readily. So whatever you're thinking on a normal basis, whatever you're doing and exercising and practicing, thinking, saying, speaking, acting, those things will be from your brain and they will be pathways that are the most easily viable and the strongest links. However, you can stop them the ones that you want to stop. You can bring firstly that awareness and attention and then shift yourself and Um, One thing that I've learned from Marissa Peer is to make those old familiar thoughts and, and thinking pathways and processes unfamiliar. So tell yourself, well, that was the old me. That's how I used to think. Or, you know, I now choose to think differently. I now open myself to a new way of looking at things. I'm open to something better happening now. And you immediately shift the way that your brain is processing things where it's a new data input into your computer. Okay, so those are some things. Also, if you're catching yourself in a moment of intense stress or worry or anxiety, um, if it's something um, that doesn't require immediate medical attention, then consider shifting your physical state your um, psychogeography. Maybe it's a matter of lifting yourself, standing up or sitting down, depending on whether you're agitated or whether you're feeling lethargic and depressed and um, bored. So literal things that can shift your state, your mental state and your physical state because they are linked. So bringing that awareness, bringing that presence and understanding where am I right now? Am I rushing into the future, making up scenarios, things that don't exist? Am I stuck in the past, looking at images of the past that are not real right now, they're no longer true? Or am I actually living right now in the moment? What do I really have to do right now? And that can very well take care of everything. Because if you're reliving a past conflict or something that you think happened, it may actually have transpired very differently. If you're worried about what's happening with other people or what someone else may be thinking about you at that moment, well, that is an impossible mission because we can never fully know what someone else is thinking. Even when they tell you, this is what I'm thinking, we will only understand it from our way of understanding the world, not from their way of living and living life and perceiving life okay so those are aspects that can empower you in any situation Um, something else another insight that I picked up on this morning again from the international speaker Marissa Peer she's also a hypnotherapist Um, I invite you to check out her work because it's been very illuminating for me in these past weeks is to consider that the things that you, besides um, addressing your language and how you're dialoguing with yourself and talking about things, 
the types of words you're using and the sentences you're creating, think about how what you're worried about can actually have a lot of blessings and opportunities couched within them. They actually embody a lot of the things that you once wanted. What you're worried about now is actually something you once dreamed of in terms of what that situation is related to. Such as in, if you're worried, if you're anxious about having to get up early for work from now on, well, consider that you once wanted a job, you once wanted this job, and you once wanted to be able to support your family or to support yourself. Um, or if you're complaining about your relationship, it's not going the way that you want it to, or you had a, a fight with your partner, consider how you how that person, it's nice to have someone in your life, and it's wonderful to normally have someone to come home to and to share with and, and to eat with and to laugh with, and that every, every situation has its ups and downs and there are hiccups along the road. So consider how it's an opportunity, the fact that you have the presence and the wherewithal to bring yourself into the moment mastery, that says a lot, okay, about your presence of mind and your own ability to manage your emotions and to be a more effective and satisfied human being in as much as you do these things that you're aware of that help you, that are beneficial. So um, those are some aspects and key insights that can help us to shift from overwhelm, worry, and fear into ease and ideally into more peace and tranquility and acceptance of what the moment is right now, whatever is happening for you right now. And if you have the opportunity in that moment to talk yourself in a positive direction, like for instance, you know, all in good time, things are working out, even if I don't know how or when, um, even if I can't see it happening on the surface, I choose to believe and to know that, you know, things have always worked out for me. And even when I feel the sirens in the background of my thoughts, because your worry thoughts are like sirens that they they come around and they're like red alarms, like worry, worry, worry. It comes and it goes. And it usually means that help is on the way. And help is always on the way as much as or as long as you're able to accept that for yourself. Not because someone else says so, but just because you choose to accept that there is a way, that things are working out, that there has to be a way forward, and that you have the answers within you and that the world is supporting you and that circumstances can work in your behalf. So from an aspect of embodying your inner resources, of having tools and techniques, knowing that you can ch change your psychogeography, shift your physical state, taking a deep breath, taking a time out to meditate, talking yourself into more ease, writing it down, journaling. Um, but I just can't emphasize enough the bringing of awareness that it, where am I really? Am I in the future? Am I worrying about something that I can control? And, and even if I am anticipating the worst that can happen, well, what's the best that can happen? The best that can happen is that things do work out and it's gonna be fine. And it may not be as bad as you think. And this is all working out for you. And all that really matters is that you be okay with yourself. That you accept yourself regardless of the outside conditions and external factors and opinions and situation. As long as you're happy with yourself and know that you have the strength and you have the ability and the resources to make it through all of life situations no matter what and this is where true inner belief self-confidence and self-assurance come into the forefront this is truly when we can realize do i really believe in myself do i believe in life and this is when you can look at the things that have worked out and and remind yourself that you are enough that you are always enough.
you always have been enough and you always will be enough. And again, if these words resonate with you, then I encourage you to check out the work of Marissa Peer, P-E-E-R, as she has been the pioneer on the forefront of this mantra, I am enough. It has apparently helped thousands of people around the world, potentially millions, because what one person shares, celebrates, that benefits every that benefits other people reaches everyone who it needs to reach so again marissa peer um coined that phrase as far as i'm aware of i am enough and you are enough and these are simple phrases and statements that can remind you of your innate power your innate worth your intrinsic wisdom And when you tap into it and tune into it like a miner drilling into the coal for for mining for for the gold and the wealth, you have that wealth, you are the wealth, and you are the source. Again, notice that it's you and your thinking that is the source of whatever you're feeling. So depending on where you are, you can choose to accept what's happening, be okay with it, And know that, what do I really have to do right now? Break it down, right? Chunk down. Take something that looks overwhelming and colossal and make it manageable. You know, I'm worried about X, but what can I do right now? I'm worried about my my health and and this uh, illness or disease or my weight. I feel like it's like spiraling, it's skyrocketing. Well, what can I do right now? I can make a juice. I can make a green smoothie. I can have a healthy salad with some steamed potatoes tonight. I can choose to have a plant-based diet to support myself. Or, you know, I'm searching for a job and I don't know, like I'm still waiting, I'm getting anxious and frustrated. Well, what can you really do right now? What is the most helpful, beneficial action you could take that will make you feel better, aligned and in the direction of that goal that you have? Do you really need to do anything right now? If you do, and you know what that is, and you can be clear that it's a decision you can make from a state of resourcefulness, then make it and do it, and know that only good can come. But if you're not in the right state of mind, again, from fear and worry and overwhelmment, take a pause before, step yourself back, shift your perception, Widen your perspective. Look at the bigger picture of how this fits into your overall life. And then come back into the present. Okay? You can do this. Anyone can do this when they are taught. And right now you can consider that you are being taught if you need to be. Or you're being reminded. You're just being reminded. We all teach each other. I am a student. And as much as I have the, the opportunity, a teacher, but I'm also a lifelong student. So as long as we know what to do, then we can do it. So if you know what to do now, you know what to do, so then you can do it. Remember that you are empowered. You have choices. Choice is better than no choice. You have a choice. I can choose to worry or I can choose to not worry, or I can, and you, or I'll worry about that later. Okay, so um, I will, um, oh, thank you, Anna. I'm glad it may help everyone. So um, that is the message for now. If you have any questions, anything that you're going through, um, it can, It can provide perhaps for a future personal power video topic and I would be delighted to share it with you. I'm also a certified life coach uh, trained for now over four and a half years. If you'd like to book a private life coaching session, you can message me and I'll be happy to do that. And otherwise, I'll keep sharing and imparting whatever knowledge and learnings that I'm going through that I can share with you. And finally, One thing that your burdens could be someone else's blessings. So that's it for now. 
Thank you for joining. I'm Jen from Personal Power Life Coaching. See you soon. And be happy and be well. Bye for now.